Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this DPCD update. That is our Department of Planning and Community Development. And I get to speak to the, to the head of that department. Claire Ricker joins us. Hello, Claire. Hello. I hope you are getting some summer this summer. A, a little bit of summer. We plan on uh, getting away next week, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So. Good for you. Good for yeah. you. I hope it is an excellent week for you. Um, all right, let's get down to business. We want to talk about several things today. Um, I know we will, uh, you have stuff to tell us about the Electrify Arlington program and also how transformative growth grant is uh, helping local businesses. We want to mm -hmm. get to those both uh, shortly, but we are going to start with a very familiar topic to the audience, no doubt about it. You and I have talked about it. Uh, many, many times, and that is the MBTA communities designation for Arlington and so many other towns and cities in Massachusetts. Uh, but its effect here in Arlington, which continues to elicit uh, intense, I would say, uh, re reactions across the spectrum. So, uh, just give us the the latest update and remind us of what the of what the real scoop is here. Sure, of course, I'm happy to. So. Last week, uh, we had uh, we held a, 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 a public working session of the MBTA Communities Working Group, uh, and we held it in town hall because we knew that there would be a lot of interest in this. You know, this was an opportunity for uh, people to interact with the working group um, and hold a discussion on uh, the work that's been done so far with MBTA communities. And thank you to everyone who showed up at this meeting. It was very well attended. There were over 100 participants there. And we heard from a really good mix, I think, of people in the community. We heard um, from sustainability um, activists. We've heard from some open space folks um, who are interested in open space, um, people who are interested in commercial development and maintaining our, our kind of our commercial base. Um, and then, of course, you know, housing advocates, people who are very uh, pro housing, pro affordable housing, you know, those sorts of things. So. It was an extremely productive meeting. Um, we had a great conversation. We heard from a lot of people, um, their concerns about MBTA communities, you know, certainly some of their fears, um, you know, and, and you know, uh, some responses about the data um, that we had shown and, and that we had, had provided. And I think, you know, as an outcome of that meeting, um, we really uh, pointed people towards uh, the data that we'd been using, um, the model that we'd been using, which is publicly available on the state website, um, and folks are, 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 I think, starting to work the model themselves and, um, you know, uh, really see what uh, what we've been up against for the past year in trying to in trying to plan this zone. Um, but it was a I thought it was a really great meeting. Um, you know, again, we got some some great information that the working group is is acting on. I think we've had a, had a wonderful dialogue and the working group has been very responsive to public comment. Um, you know, and this has just been just a, a great opportunity for us to go back to the public and, and talk about goals um, that have been set forth in all of our plans. You know, the master plan, the net zero action plan, housing production plan, all of the plans that we have for the town um, mention the need to build more housing, um, build modern housing, um, and, you know, build affordable housing. And of course, MBTA communities is one way that we can um, achieve that goal. So since that meeting, um, you know, where we've really moved on from establishing where the zone um, will, will go um, to establishing what will go in the zone. And so in this week's working group meeting, um, there were three memos presented for discussion. We do not have an updated map at this time. Our, our, our last map is the one marked uh, July 25th on the website. Um, but we talked about three memos. Um, two working group memos offered um, great examples in detail about how the group might... Um, uh, you know, might implement a, an affordable housing um, incentive uh, to, to the zone so that developers that want to go above and beyond our inclusionary zoning percentage of 15%, you know, may uh, receive a, uh, an incentive to do that. And so there's a great memo that was written by the working group folks, um, you know, that sort of goes into that. Um, there were two memos written by uh, me and by David Morgan, who's our environmental planner, about uh, potential open space incentives, um, which are which are very interesting. It's something um, that I've never worked with before, but, um, you know, David, uh, our environmental planner, is, uh, is great on this stuff. And so he's, you know, kind of devised a way that we could actually achieve an open space incentive, um, which I know a lot of folks are sort of looking for. Um, another thing that was agreed on, we had heard at the public meeting the week 
week before that people were very concerned about setbacks. Um, so the working group responded to that and, you know, made a decision um, to do, uh, you know, setbacks as they were sort of brought up um, at the meeting by um, folks who were um, interested in open space. Um, and so what we are going to do is uh, we'll end up with a, a 15 foot setback if people who were at the meeting would know this, a 15 foot setback um, across the entire zone, unless we were uh, working to incentivize commercial development, in which case that commercial piece would be able to come up to the back of the sidewalk in a zero setback. So that was, I thought, a really great example of how this group has been responding to public comment um, and, you know, uh, public desire, especially, you know, to, you know just changing uh, what they were thinking about this setback, um, you know, as a result of that public meeting, um, which was just fantastic. And I think I'm just going to mention one more thing, and that is this open space um, incentive that David Morgan and I are working on. Um, and what we're really looking to do is um, implement a, a, a site evaluation pro uh, 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 process similar to LEED. LEED really generally works on mm -hmm. buildings and things like that. Um, and it's called sites, and it is for... Um, you know, it's a method of project evaluation that is very focused on open uh, on open space, um, but also sustainable construction methods, um, which I think this is something else the town would be interested in. And how do we build things in sustainable ways um, and make sure that, you know, what is happening on the job site um, is, is also um, in line with town goals. Um, so a lot of work to do. Uh, we're still refining the, the zoning uh, language. Um, we're working on updating our map. Um, from the uh, feedback we got on July uh, the 25th. And this is all in preparation for the ARB hearings, um, which will start in um, September. The video of the meeting is up on our website, um, plus the memos that were discussed at the meeting on Tuesday. And our surveys, are our, our sort of public input um, surveys are closed, but you can always, always um, deliver any comments you want to MBTA communities uh, at, uh, town, at the town. Um, we have a, 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 an email up on the website and feel free, you know, any additional comments, thoughts, whatever, um, we're still accepting, you know, any, any public comment, um, but we're, we're no longer doing, uh, surveying the, the public at this point. So it's a long so update. <laughs> that's a long update. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there was so much to cover and I just want to reiterate a couple of the things that you said, or, uh, you know, give my own, uh, emphasis to, uh, the fact that it, you know, I, in private conversations um, and, you know, in listening in to the meeting uh, that you referred to, uh, to some of the comments there, it's clear that that folks sometimes struggle really to get the information that uh, that you guys are making available. So let's just, uh, you know, repeat one more time everything that you have alluded to, I believe, uh, today, but the, from the meeting the video of the meeting itself to the memos in response to public concerns, et cetera. And basically the latest snapshot of where you guys are is available to everybody. If they go to the website and do, you know, they probably don't have to do a lot of digging, but go to the town's website and, uh, and, and they are going to be able to access this, this information for themselves. That's correct. All the material that we have worked on in the working group, you know, maps that we have looked at and abandoned, things like that. Every uh, Everything that's been discussed, everything that we've worked on um, is available on the website, along with FAQs, memos, all sorts of things that sort of explain, um, you know, where, why, and how the town intends to do this. So the information is there, certainly, um, and there's a lot of it, um, but it's all there, and, and people should absolutely um, take a look uh, at what we have and take a look at the work that's been done. Great. Thank you very much for that. So let's sure. move on. We've got a couple of other things to talk about. One of them is Electrify Arlington, which, as far as I know, uh, you know, kind of uh, engenders a little less controversy uh, than uh, the MBTA communities. But tell us what's going on in Elect sure. with Electrify yeah, Arlington. Yeah, I love to talk about Electrify Arlington. It's such a, a great program um, that we launched last fall. Um, and it's our campaign to shift from fossil fuel to clean electricity in our homes um, and on our vehicles, as well as, you know, making sure that the town is using um, our energy efficiently. And so town staff and volunteers have been supporting residents um, with free heat pump coaching, um, information on rebates and educational um, events. 
Um, the town has uh, contracted now, and moving forward with this project, the, to the town has contracted with Homeworks, uh, which is a home performance um, contractor, and they are going to conduct free uh, mass save energy assessments um, in homes. So residents will be receiving a, a letter in the mail about this partnership the town has with Homeworks. Um, and how, to, how they may go about scheduling assessment. But you know, also representatives from HomeWorks will be going door to door um, in the coming months to help get the word out. And of course, they will be wearing IDs that, that uh, you know, immediately identify them as, as, uh, as a HomeWorks um, worker. Um, I, I, another great move that's been made, um, the town has hired Lori Kenshaft, who will be our new um, energy advocate. Um, so she begins her role next week. Um, she has moved from a volunteer role as, uh, as the manager, really, of Electrify Arlington's heat pump coaching um, to this part-time position. Um, so her job will be to enhance um, uh, Electrify Arlington's outreach to renters, landlords, low and mod income uh, residents, and residents who speak languages other than English to connect them to the mass save incentives that are available. Um, and this part-time role is funded um, through a grant, actually. It's funded through Arlington's participation in the Mass Save uh, Community First Partnership, which is utility grant um, sponsored program that supports outreach to environmental justice communities. So we are thrilled to have Lori on um, and uh, in this part-time grant-funded uh, position and hope that people will reach out to, to Lori um, with any of their questions about mass save programs or um, just general efficiency questions. And of course, she's an expert on heat pumps and you could probably reach out to her and she'd have the information on those as well. Yeah, and we are referring to them as heat pumps, but uh, as you well know, of course, they also cool. Um, and uh, that I just want to share anecdotally that we've had uh, heat pumps at our house for a number of years now. Um, but it's a four bedroom house. This this past this summer, just now, uh, for the first time ever, we actually, you know, closed all the windows for weeks at a time uh, wow. and just had the heat pumps working. And I was very interested to see what the what that reflection would be on our electric bill. And I was quite pleased uh, to see that it was a, a, a quite an efficient way to keep our house comfortable and cool through this last long period of heat. So right. yay, um, we're, we're psyched at our house. Hopefully other people are finding the same thing to be true uh, yes. with the, the heat pumps in their house. Okay, one last thing, and that is the Transformative Growth Grant Program and how that is working for local businesses. Tell us about yeah. that. Fantastic. This was such a, an innovative uh, way, I think, to distribute um, local ARPA funds. Um, so some Arlington, uh, Arlington businesses were awarded a total of $860,000 um, in our transformative growth grant program. Um, and the grant was funded, you know, via our, our ARPA funds um, and administered by this department, by DPCD. So 22 nonprofit organizations and small businesses um, representing a variety of, of industries, um, you know, across the town that were disproportionately affected uh, by the pandemic were selected for these grants. Um, and in August, stay tuned, um, the town plans to highlight many of those businesses on social media. And, you know, those businesses include the, the Regent Theater, um, Helena's, Magic Bites, um, the Arlington Center for the Arts, the Dolan Museum, Ty Moon, the Women's Literacy Center, and um, your Arlington, you know, another, uh, another local uh, business um, looking for some aid. Um, so we'll be doing a social media campaign that's going to, well, you know, uh, business owners will talk about the impact of the um, transformative growth grant, um, as well as how they spend it and um, how they uh, intend to move forward with their business. That uh, that list that you gave us, and I know it's just partial, uh, does kind of give a, a good sense of the breadth yeah. of uh, of the support that's being provided through these funds. So that's, that's great. Right. Excellent news with which to end our update, unless we have missed anything. No new business. <laughs> All right. Um, so a lot of MBTA communities, but a lot of good news uh, beyond that as well. So yes. um, hope that everybody uh, feels a little bit better informed having watched us today. I do myself as usual. I appreciate uh, your time, Claire. We appreciate your time, I should say, and, uh, and also yours out there in the audience. Thanks so much for joining us. This has been the DPCD update with the director of that department, the department being 
Planning and Community Development. Uh, she is Claire Ricker. We do appreciate her time, as I said, and yours as well. Thank you so much for joining us. This is James Milan. We'll see you next time. Music